What is going on everybody? It is Luke Beller and today I thought we would talk about this Packers backfield because recently we've seen just how dominant they can be. All three of them paired up together with Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, and A.J. Dillon. We saw them rush for a combined 191 yards versus the Rams that were the number four rushing defense in the NFL in 2020. And so I sort of want to break down sort of how it all came to be and also look forward to this NFC Championship game and sort of what we could expect from these three running backs coming into this game. But first off, I wanted to say thank you guys so much. We just hit 4,000 subscribers. It's awesome to see all you guys coming in recently. You know, starting the year a couple weeks ago, we were at like 2,500. So to see about 1,500 of you guys come in here and subscribe, I just want to say I really appreciate all you guys' support. Um, I started this channel back in May, talking about the Packers, talking about other things as well. So to see you guys come in and support the channel just really means a lot. So when we take a look at this Packers backfield, obviously the guy we got to start with is Aaron Jones. One of the best running backs in the NFL. He's been balling out for the Packers the past few seasons. And what's crazy with Aaron Jones is the fact that he was picked in the fifth round. Back in 2017, he was picked in the fifth round of the 2017 NFL draft, selected as the 17th best uh, running back in that draft class. And it's just crazy to think of how far he's come and how good he has been, considering he was drafted all the way in the fifth round. And so if we take a look sort of in his um, years in Green Bay from 2017 all the way to 2020, Back in 2017, you know, didn't really get to play that much. Had 81 attempts in that game, or in that season, not that game. That would be a lot of attempts for one game. Um, but he did have 488 yards, averaging 5.5 yards per carry. And as you can see in these four seasons, in three of those four seasons, he's averaged 5.5 yards per carry, which is, you know, pretty close to leading the league each season. I'm pretty sure this year he led the league in running backs for um, yards per carry. If not first, he's pretty close to the top. Um, and as we can see, you know, 2017, 2018, he sort of slowly moves up and carries before sort of taking over the main role, you know, through 2019 and 2020. In 2019, obviously, you know, that year where he puts up 16 touchdowns, that was just crazy, leading the NFL. So it's really amazing to see sort of how far he's come from being that fifth round pick back in 2017 to being one of the best running backs in the NFL. And then next, we got Jamal Williams, who has been great as well for this Packers team. The crazy thing about him, he was picked in the same draft as Aaron Jones, but was actually picked one round ahead of Aaron Jones. And when we take a look at his time in Green Bay, you know, same amount of time as Aaron Jones. 2017 actually gets more carries than Aaron Jones, 153 carries that year, averages 3.6 yards per carry. So as we can see in Jamal Williams' stats here, Obviously not as good as Aaron Jones when it comes to yards per carry. Um, his best yards per carry was in 2019 with 4.3 yards per carry. Um, definitely improved after his first two seasons, you know, moving from 3.6, 3.8 to 4.3 um, yards per carry, then 4.2 yards per carry this season. Um, and so, of course, with Aaron Jones being the number one option, Jamal Williams doesn't get quite as many touches as Aaron Jones. But when he does come into the game, you know, he makes the most of his opportunities. He's a very powerful back you know, coming in on third down lots of times, pushing through. He just runs so hard, and he's such a fun player to watch. Um, and then, of course, we got the third running back, A.J. Dillon, being drafted in 2020 in the second round of that draft. Lots of people were sort of confused as to why the Packers would pick a running back, considering they do have two very, very good running backs. One reason, obviously, could be the fact that both Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams will be free agents after this year. And who knows if the Packers will be able to keep both of them. And so, you know, to have A.J. Dillon on this team, especially, you know, now to have all three of these guys, it's just crazy to be able to have so many talented running backs in one backfield. And we saw just how good they can be together in this game versus the Rams, running for 191 yards. And if we take a look at their stats right here, Aaron Jones, 14 carries, 99 yards, 7.1 yards per carry. Obviously, that 60-yard run by Aaron Jones definitely helped his stats on that one. And then Jamal Williams, 12 carries, 65 yards, 5.4 yards per carry. And then A.J. Dillon, 6 carries, 27 yards, 4.5 yards per carry. And if we sort of take a look at a quote from Matt LaFleur here on this situation, he said, I think each and every week that could change in terms of how we attack somebody, but certainly the opportunity presented itself versus the Rams to have some two-back formations, some two-back sets in the game plan. I thought our guys did a great job of executing what we asked them to do. So in that game versus the Rams, we did see a few um, different plays where they also they had Aaron Jones as well as AJ Dillon in those plays. And so to see them, you know, working together, the way that the Packers are able to utilize all three guys to keep them, you know, fresh throughout the game, they don't have to, you know, force Aaron Jones to carry the ball 20 to 25 times a game. They can give him 14 carries, Jamal 12, and really keep these guys, uh, you know, fresh for the entire game. And we saw just how good they were against this Rams defense. So many runs just up the middle, just gashing this Rams defense. And considering they are one of the best defenses in the NFL, the fact that the Packers were able to do that really gives us hope, you know, coming into the NFC Championship 
as well as, you know, hopefully the Super Bowl if we can beat this Buccaneers team. But when we take a look at this Buccaneers team, sort of to see just how good they are, the Rams in, 20, in 2020 were fourth when it came to, you know, yards allowed per game for rushing yards allowed per game. With 99 yards allowed per game, the Bucs were first with 82 yards per game allowed. So the Bucs are definitely better when it comes to stopping the run. So the question is, will the Packers be able to run the ball just as well as they did versus the Rams? versus the Buccaneers. And obviously that's a tough, you know, I can't predict the future. You can't predict the future, but it's definitely gonna be a good challenge. And we saw back in week six, the Packers had a pretty tough time running the ball against that Buccaneers defense. Partly, of course, the Bucs got off to a 28 to 10 lead in the second quarter. And so the Packers couldn't really rely on the run in that game. And so hopefully the Packers can get off to a fast start in this one and be able to, you know, pound the rock and give all three guys an opportunity once again. But if we sort of take a look at the Saints and sort of how they did against this Buccaneers team, Alvin Kamara, Kamara, however you say his name, had 18 carries for 85 yards, and he did average 4.7 yards per carry. So I definitely think I think it's definitely possible to get the running game going against this Buccaneers team. It'll definitely be difficult. Also, I saw this week that Vita Vea may be coming back. You know, their defensive lineman who broke his ankle back in week five and has been on the injured reserve. He could be back this week, so that could definitely make it a little more challenging. But who knows if he'll be ready to go considering he's been out for such a long, you know, extended period of time. But it's really amazing to see just how good this Packers backfield can be, like we saw versus the Rams. But the question really is coming into next year, are we going to get to see these three guys on the same team once again because Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones are both going to be free agents. And we've sort of talked about this a lot um, throughout the season, knowing Aaron Jones is going to be a free agent. Will the Packers be able to pay him? You know, will they end up paying him? We don't really know the question. Wait, we don't know the answer. The question? We don't really know the answer to that question. And so it, I really honestly hope we could somehow see all three of them again. It may be tough though with the salary cap because you know obviously you got to stay under that number. You got to pay other players as well. So will they be able to pay Aaron Jones? I sort of hope so, but who knows what's going to happen. It's going to be exciting to see. It's going to be an exciting off season for sure. But if you guys enjoyed today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you smashed that like button down below. It really helps just push the video out to more people. And if you have yet to subscribe to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss Packers news and analysis pretty much every single day. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.